previously on Into the Motherlands. Hello, Motherlands family, and welcome to Back to the Motherlands, presented by Dicey Amazons, a quick recap show discussing the development and events of Into the Motherlands campaign featuring Tanya DePass, Christina Ariel, Michael Sinclair II, DJ Knight, Abria Iyengar, and storyteller Eugenio Vargas. I'm Candy, executive producer of Dicey Amazons and one of your hosts. And I'm your other host, Pi, head producer of Dicey Amazons. So let's jump right into season three, episode four, which I'm going to dub the chaotic episode because it was just pure chaotic energy from basically start to finish. So we start out with Invicta going to check on Dr. Nero as your boy was laid out on the cool, cold floor after he was like huffing and puffing. Uh, similar to my fashion, chasing after after Kosa when he thought that she was going to destroy the ship. When Kosa was just in typical Kosa fashion, just checking on, you know, the integrity of the hall of the ship. Uh, and then we flash over to Sila, uh, Vice Admiral Sila 919, who is making sure that the kitchen is stocked with all of the snacks of like my middle school and high school days, uh, like with the the pretzels with the cheese and like the little individual snacks and like the big container, you know, it was just generally good stuff. I'll, I'll go making its way into the kitchen. Uh, and then there is this like this whole like conversation where, I mean, I'm not gonna lie Candy, I thought for sure that door was rigged. I know. So Kosa is checking on everyone going into this door and just checking to see if like the door, it has like, is, is it doing its job well? You know, is the door <laughs> doing the door things? Yeah, can you uh, go in? And, <laughs> Yeah, can you go in the door? So the general aid, like questions about that makes an Invicta pause. It makes Sila pause. Uh, I'm pretty sure if Eli was there, they would have paused too. Everyone was like, wait, Kosa, what did you do to this door? Because now I don't trust it, the ship, or you. Because <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and Akimba just barrels through. Akimba's like, I don't know what y'all are talking about. I, I got to get into this ship and just walks through the door. And then the door functions like a, a door. door. But the, <laughs> the chaotic energy was just, it was on par. I'm completely happy with it. <laughs> yeah, that was a little uh, hilarious part there that happened. <clears throat> oh, yeah. But uh, as the crew enters the ship, they all kind of go in different directions. Uh, so Invicta, she was like, I want to see my, my quarters. So she heads straight for her quarters. Um, Koza goes to the, uh, the workroom. <clears throat> or actually, no, Koza, well, she does go to the workroom, but she basically does a, a round around the whole ship. Like she's, I want to see everything. <laughs> Every inch. Right. <clears throat> and then Silent 919 and, uh, Ikemba both head for the kitchen. Uh, slash galley, but we gonna call it a kitchen because I don't think Christina liked that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but they head for the kitchen, just making sure everything is, you know, all right. Kemba's checking on his cheese stuff. Like, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, but um, <clears throat> as Invicta heads towards her room, she goes in, uh, she walks in the door, and there's a voice. <laughs> that greets her when she walks in she's not quite happy with it makes a bit of a change uh to the default voice uh but the voice does have a name at least for invicta uh and it is vicky <laughs> so i like that uh i think christina i don't know if this was actually intentional but christina caught on like vi like virtual intelligence so i was like ah that's kind of yeah. cool <laughs> yeah I, 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 it was clever you know she'd be thanking yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then after that, um, like everybody's sort of preparing to leave. They make sure they have all of their things, uh, with them. Silent 919 is definitely making sure everybody has everything, including their toothbrush. Um, but we get to see this ship take off, this spherical ship, uh, where the outside actually spins. And that's the propulsion system for the ship. So we actually get to see it take off. All the engineers are super duper happy, uh, that it didn't blow up. <laughs> Um, yeah. but it is now spinning in space as the crew, uh, basically begin their mission of figuring out what the signal, uh, is. Uh, yeah. So the crew is getting settled into their ship. Uh, they're, they're heading to their stations and, and basically going to head to the comms array to investigate, uh, this signal. Uh, so from here. We get a rundown on some of the areas that that they're going past because you know the ship is is complicated and very 
technologically sound. And so we're seeing like asteroids and planets go by and basically like we're, we're getting like the tour version of the galaxies <laughs> as yeah. as the ship that has still yet to be named is 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 making its way downtown is what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, so th this is basically what's going on for the next two days. Uh, then from there, they reached where the end of the end of Vatua's sensor array. So basically, this is like the end where like they can like send stuff out and like get like arrays and like signals coming back to them. But there are a couple of problems along the way. Uh, Kosa is trying to figure out where to pull power from because, like, you know, you, you gotta divert power from somewhere. Anyone who has seen this sci-fi show knows that, you know, there's a finite amount of power and we gotta pull from somewhere. And Kosa is like, well, you know, what this button do? Uh, life support, <laughs> it'll be fine. It'll be fine for, it. it'll be fine, okay? They'll, they, no one die, no one will die, is what basically what Koza said. Little did Kosa know, uh, Koza know that uh, Akimba was in the gym practicing and, you know, getting his one, two Taibo in and all of a sudden can't breathe, which is not great when you're doing something that needs for you to be breathing. You know, Absolutely. that's just that's just how science works. You know what I'm saying? So uh we get to this really interesting scene of uh Akemba get like barreling into uh the workshop to Kosa, what did you do? I know you did something. I can't breathe. <laughs> Fix it. <laughs> So uh, uh, Kosa basically expla explains that she's trying to make sure that she has more granulated uh, power control controls over the systems, and uh, she she is trying to work it out and just bear with her for just just a couple seconds more. Um, to which uh, Kemba goes, "Uh huh," and then passes out um, <laughs> because when you don't have air, you know that's what happens. That's how science works. And so uh, Kosa gives up, uh, kind of, and and you know at, at brings the life support back to stable r ranges for you know people to be breathing and such, uh, and and then and kind of calls Akimba a little bit of a punk for, <laughs> for passing out, which I mean that hurt my feelings a little bit. So. No, that was that was. Uh... <laughs> That was too much for me. I was I was dying. Yeah. But also, like Akimba wasn't the only one that passed out. So did Invicta because she was over sort of the the all call <laughs> system. Like, hey, what's going on? And then nothing. And then thunk, and you hear her pass out too. So we got two people that are passed out on the ship, basically, as uh, <laughs> as Koza, who is breathing hard. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. finally turns Kosa's the life support back on. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, 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 and then and then on top of all that, cut to Vice Admiral Silent 919, not worried about it. Not no my idea. Hair, Had not no my idea. Problem. Had no yeah. idea. She was actually backing up her system. Mm. <laughs> so she was out of it. Had no idea what was going on. I didn't uh, know. <laughs> <Heck>. Right. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. That was, that was a great part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely a scene that I would love to see animated because yeah. <laughs> hilarious. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so the the crew is is recovering <laughs> from the lack of oxygen, and Silent Nine One Nine is still in the command center, um, and she notices that um, like as they're still kind of flying around that the signal has stopped. Um, and so she kind of, you know, turns it a bit and says, hey, okay, you know, where did this stop at? She starts to run um, some of the systems to kind of figure out. And then actually um, finds out that, because they were kind of approaching a planetary system. And so she finds out that there's this asteroid belt that's um, going around the sun in this planetary system. And somewhere in that asteroid belt, that's where the signal seems to end. Um, <clears throat> so she actually, she's like, okay, we're kind of going towards this asteroid belt. Let me, let me see what's up with these shields. She calls, uh, Invicta who is still injured, <laughs> but do it. Okay. Um, and she, she's able to get the shields up with the help from Invicta. <clears throat> and so <sighs> for this part here, she 
she's doing some more scanning. Um, she's using the ship systems as well as kind of like her her vision uh, sensors. And she actually sees, like she's actually blinded, like real quick. And so like something happened and then her vision sensors clear. And apparently some of the asteroids in this asteroid belt are actually metal. And so they had caught the sun and just had this blinding light. And then bright like a diamond. Right yeah. her face. <laughs> so with that, um, Silent Alma 9 is like, hey, I need everybody up uh, to the deck. Let's go. Um, I got, you know, we got to talk. <laughs> And so um, everybody comes up, everybody like jumps on their stations and uh, everybody's kind of doing different scans and things and trying to figure out what's going on. Um, Koza wants to actually bring one of the smaller asteroids on board to, you know, investigate it a little bit more. Because why not? Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you want to like find out more? How do you, how do you science <laughs> if you don't get, get artifacts and, and things and dig and such? But I could also see that possibly going wrong if, you know, it happened to, you know, be something in it or, you know. So I could definitely see, like, some of the hesitation from the rest of the crew uh, with that. But, uh, yeah, they actually, Koza actually does, is able to uh, bring that on board. But while she's working on that. Uh, yeah, so while she's working on that, Akimba is working on, on trying to scan uh, the area with all the, with all the asteroids and whatnot, and it doesn't have any luck uh, with finding, with the scanning luck, uh, which, it, which turned into an interesting hitch uh, that, that <laughs> Akimba ended up having. Um, so uh, next we, cu we cut to Invicta uh, has an amazing role, uh, and she finds out that there are actually cloaked ships that are hiding in the asteroids and they're like using the the science <laughs> and the refractions, you know what I'm saying, to like hide. And it's it's scary stuff. And it, you know, science is at at play right here. So Koza is able to like like you said, Koza was able to bring one of the asteroids uh, back onto the ship. So Vice Admiral Sila 919 contacts Torch HQ. Uh, to, to basically reach out to them and say, we got these asteroids that are actually cloaked ships that are reflecting, refracting sunlight off of the things and angles are happening. Do you have any more information about these ships? How can we proceed going forward? Uh, and then Major Rafia gets back to the rest of the crew and tells, tells the rest of the crew that these ships seem to be a part of the Cardathese pirates. I know I'm saying that name wrong, y'all. I'm so sorry. I practice. I'm going to get it right maybe next time. Uh, and so they had they had a run in with them uh, on the way to uh, Hothrae Hothrae a few months ago, and then from there Invicta goes ham, and Invicta's like, hey, we can just they're pirates, you know, we can just yeah pew 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 <laughs> gang gang all day, <laughs> and that's basically where the episode ends. And I I love it anytime that Invicta gets to go gangster on somebody. It reminds me, honestly, of, like, my great-grandmother. You know what I'm saying? Like, double barrel shotgun, come at me, bro, what you got? <laughs> I'm here for it. So uh, that's that's everything that happened in every, in Season 3, Episode 4. Uh, thanks, everyone, for turning, tuning in to Back to the Motherlands. Stay tuned for Episode 5, coming on right after this, and every Wednesday on twitch.tv slash cypher of tear at 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Central Time. And if you want to check out more content from the Dicey Amazons, you can check us out on twitch.tv slash Dicey Amazons. Enjoy the next episode coming up right after this. <laughs> Bye! Bye!
centuries ago, the Malian emperor Mansa Musa sent his best and brightest scholars, explorers, warriors, and artisans across the great western ocean to discover new lands. They succeeded in ways no one could imagine. Now, 3,000 years later, their descendants have made a home for themselves on a new planet, and the calls of adventure and discovery are stronger than ever. Join creative director Tanya DePass as Invicta, the High and Old Blade Keeper. DJ Knight as Akemba, the Musalian Bio-Priest. Michael Sinclair II as Eli, the Misajai Lightbringer. Christina Ariel as Sila 919, the Monsagene Bio-Priest. Abria Iyengar as Koza, the Hyenol Fixer. And Ahenio Vargas as the Storyteller, as they explore new planets, make new friends, and treat everyone they meet luxuriously. Welcome to The Motherlands. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to episode five, 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 season three of Into the Motherlands. We're very happy that you are here joining us this evening. My name is Eugenio. I am DM Jazzy Hands, and I will be your storyteller this evening. Uh, and before we get any further, why don't we introduce the other lovely faces that surround me? Uh, go. I'm Michael, Christina go first. Ariel, and today I will be playing. Sila919, and, and she's a Monsagani bio priest, and haha, jinx on you, Quiddy, because you spoke at the same time, so you owe me a soda pop of a, a legally distinct type. I love this, and we're uh, staying clear of, uh, you know, Big Cola, who's been such a problem. They've been hounding well, us. Well, I was in the pocket hounding. of Big Cola for a little bit, but I've been out. I've been out. I've moved over it. to Big Energy Drink. There we oh, go. All right. That seems marginally healthier. Who's next? <laughs> I guess I will go. Uh, Apparently so. I was supposed to go. Uh, <laughs> hello. My name is Michael Sinclair II, and because I did this on Let's Get Wild Not, I want to do it here. Hi. Uh, Jeez, I already messed this up. But anyway, I'm Eli, the Mr. Jedi Lightbringer. I did this on Let's Get Wild Now, so I was going to say, oh yeah, I'm Leros, the, the Sh Shatterkai Blood Cleric. So anyway, we got that out of the way so that there's symmetry and balance, because that's what Eli would be about. I'm just staying in character. Anyway, uh, super excited to uh, be here. Uh, Eli's pronouns are they, them. My pronouns are he, him. Incredible. Next. I live that life. Hello, I am Abria Iyengar, aka Quiddy, playing Koza, your high and old fixer. Um, I always feel like I say it fast and I'm supposed to say more, but then I realize that's just me like leaning into Koza's ADHD and I'm like, uh oh, what have I forgotten to say? <laughs> Pronouns, she, her for both. We did See, it. You got there. You did it. All right, DJ, you want to fight for it? Ladies first. Fisty Cubs. <laughs> When he goes, DJ, have you seen him? <laughs> Fair. I wouldn't even engage in physicals. I just, I, I, would, well, just have to, I would just take a well whooped ass in the situation. <laughs> Not that I would ever do that, but hi, I'm Tanya. <laughs> I keep coming back here for some reason. I don't know why, but I am Invicta, your high and old blade keeper. Both Invicta's pronouns and mine are she, her. Okay, I guess that leaves me. I'm DJ Knight. I'm playing your. Salian Bio Priest. My name is Akemba, or his name is Akemba. You know, you know what's up. It's us. Our pronouns are he, him. You're awesome. It's a Wednesday. Let me shut up. We are all clearly in a place this week. Uh, and again, I'm opinion, I'll be your storyteller, and I use he, him pronouns. The NPCs are a free for all. We'll find out. Um, great. We've got some folks to thank uh, for being here or for helping us be here this week. First up, we of course want to thank Die Hard Dice. Uh, they made those beautiful Musalian Skies dice. We hopefully have more in the hopper with them, and also just all their stuff's pretty dope. Uh, so go check out their stock and get you some click clack math rocks at dieharddice.com. And when you do, you should use the code Motherlands R P G. Uh, to get 10% off your whole order. So yeah, go check out Die Hard Dice. Uh, we also want to thank Blue 
microphones uh, for supplying us with equipment to make sure that we sound good for you all. You can check out everything they have available at bluemic.com. Uh, some of you I know uh, were here last week and may remember that I mentioned that we were going to be doing a blue giveaway this week. Uh, that's not true. We're going to do it next week. Uh, so, um, so yeah, we will be doing that. We have some product from them uh, so that you all too can sound awesome. Uh, but we are holding off one more week before we do those giveaways. However, our next sponsor, Cortex by Fandom, uh, we are still doing our giveaways for the Cortex digital handbooks. Uh, so keep an eye on chat mods to let you know how to enter that. But we want to thank the folks at Cortex by Fandom. Our, uh, our game here is powered by Cortex uh, and we are very excited to get to share their system with you on the stream. You can follow them on Twitter at Cortex RPG for the Cortex specific stuff for news about Tales of Zadia, the official Dragon Prince RPG and Legends of Grayskull, the Masters of the Universe RPG. Uh, or you can follow Fandom in general and all of their great products uh, by following at Fandom Tabletop on the Twitters. Now, I believe I, at this point, shall pass off uh, the talky talky chatty top of show stuff to Tanya. Yes, you forgot um, the money, where the money came from. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I lumped that all together for you, but I should do that part first. We, of course, last but most certainly not least, uh, want to thank our, our financial, biggest financial sponsor, our only financial sponsor, whatever, you don't need to know that, our financial sponsor, Twitch. Uh, the Into the Motherlands premieres exclusively here on Twitch every week, uh, and we are grateful for the budget. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and with all that said, uh, speaking of Twitch, I do, and I'm looking at the wrong camera, I am so out of practice with this. Um, I do want to take a minute to acknowledge that today is the day of Twitch, and normally we would not be here, and none of us stream during the day today. Some of us normally do stream on Wednesdays, because we do support the action that our friends are taking. However, especially for the obtuse motherfuckers on Twitter, Ooh. there's a thing called contract, which we can't break. So that's why we're still streaming. It's why we're not doing our blue mic giveaway to respect the fact that today is really supposed to be a day of action. And yeah, I called y'all a bunch of obtuse motherfuckers. You can know where to find me on Twitter. It's my channel, I'm gonna say it. That's right, so, that's right. Look, uh, my favorite piece of advice is if you have something negative to say, follow it with your address. <laughs> Oh, I, I have so much free time and disposable income. We can the absolutely have that, this. That sounded like it is. <laughs> Introductions it is. because these hands rated E for everyone. That's what I heard. <laughs> I will cast hands at the ninth Love level. That. Let's go. Love that. Oh, wait. <laughs> I got that. Maybe I might change during the break because I got them hands university shirt. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Ooh. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Tanya. Uh, I'm glad that we, uh, we are here. But it was really Christina's raising her us, hand that we make a statement about that. Yes, Christina. Yes, I'm sorry. I just no, don't follow, apologize. Some, follow with that if you all don't mind. I understand that a lot of people make movements in good faith and all of that fun stuff, but if you are going to the marginalized creators that are being harassed and trying to act as a moral authority on what they should do when they are the ones who are being victimized in a situation, maybe don't and maybe lead with a little bit of compassion and understanding as Tanya said, there are contracts and such involved, but also like, just be better than that. Like you're becoming the same thing that you're having an issue with. So like maybe don't, and maybe look at it objectively and say, hey, if I don't have anything nice to say, I'm not gonna say anything. I will do like, it's not taking action to just go clap back at someone on the internet. Like there's more to it than that. There's more beyond that. And what are your actions in the real world that you are doing to motivate change? So just be mindful about what you're doing for show and what you are doing out of the legit goodness of your heart because you want to be the ally that you claim to be. Thanks. Well said, thank you. Just coming for some... slacktivists on a Wednesday. We love this. That was the most yeah. fantastic and the kindest way of saying all that then. I've heard. Yes. I appreciate it because mm -hmm. I would have just reminded mm -hmm. people that shutting them up is a free action. <gasps> I was about and to say that. I love you. That also, if you are somebody who would or not in a group of people who are being victimized that has something negative to say about the people who are who are acting on a thing, and they're acting on a thing in as much faith as possible, eat, eat all the, all the, all of the. 
everything that you can imagine that he looks could like be I just said it, anything. like all of the things, like whatever you think I was saying, I was saying that, like you, yeah. you eat them, eat them. Really no every one of them uh, with a knife and fork. Be to sure. sum it up, it is said <laughs> as someone from Columbus, Georgia, let me say, bless your heart. Ooh, Ooh love that. that, is, that Listen is to most, us. Listen man, to us. You, if you had a grandma, yeah, you heard your grandma say, "Bless their heart." Like, ooh, yeah. that is the meanest <laughs> thing yeah. you could or, ever hear anybody. Well, DJ say. for for the Chicago ones in the chat. Whenever you hear somebody say, "Now look here, partner," you know it's time to go. Oh, you hear? Oh, that's a wrap. <laughs> look here, partner. Um, any I, anything else? I, I want to take as much time as we want on this because uh, it's important. So, does anyone else want to? I salute Christina for being a far nicer person than I will ever be in my life. <laughs> also I'm an elegant and classy broad. I, well, I you are. There you That's go. some damn, y'all. I can't top the ranges of violence and I know, right? <laughs> I can't. That's why I'm like, they said it. They did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, all of that. Uh, thank you for all, us for, for saying that. Um, thank you for those of you who are here. Uh, for getting it, for understanding. Um, and honestly, thank you for, for you know, your support, both for us, for Motherlands, and whatever, in whatever way you have been supporting the movement, you have been putting the pressure on, you have been doing whatever it is that you're doing uh, in response to, to the hate raids. Um, thanks. It's, it's a lot, and it obviously affects uh, the six of us here uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, what am I trying to say? We appreciate you. Uh, we see you. Uh, on the other side of things, uh, those who are doing it right, and we appreciate you. Uh, thanks for being here. Cool. Um, recap. So if you were not here for the recap, I should remind everyone, because uh, it's so great, and I try and like listen in every week, because there's always something that I have forgotten uh, that they recap us on. Um, but if you would like a full and glorious uh, recap with with flavor. Uh, you should come a little bit early every week uh, because our friends over on Dicey Amazons, um, Dicey and uh, and uh, Pi, uh, do a great recap every week about, uh, you should probably be here 15 to 20 minutes before our go time uh, so you can get the full recap every week. But I will always do uh, a briefer one here at the top just in case you can't be here extra early. Uh, last week, we had finished building the ship. <laughs> After much teeth pulling, we boarded the ship uh, and then we flew away. Uh, we left on a journey to go follow the comm signal from these mysterious machines out of <clears throat> the Toe and Scanner range, out into the depths and darkness of the void of space uh, and followed it for a few days. And eventually you all uh, managed to figure out where that signal was going. Uh, you discovered a system not too far outside of scanner range, but definitely beyond it. Um, and in this system, there was an asteroid belt. And in that asteroid belt, there was a chunk of it that had highly reflective, metallic looking asteroids uh, throughout it. And somewhere on one of those asteroids, one of the larger one of those shiny asteroids, uh, seemed to be some sort of comms relay device uh, that you all uh, sense you got found on your sensors um, and you were going to head there to figure out what was going on and figure out why the asteroids were shiny but then somebody rolled the absolute shit out of your dice pool uh, for that roll to figure out something about the asteroids and you also happen to spot a few more ships that are there hiding among the asteroids one larger and two smaller ships and it was such a good roll with such an outrageously high uh, effect die, but I also told you that um, you recognize these ships, not these specific ones, but whether it's that they have a, a very subtle insignia on them, or maybe it was the construction of the ship itself. But those of you who uh, went on the Wistful Wish to Hathare all those months ago, recognize these three ships as members of the Cathartes pirate gang. Um, they're, they're a large, uh, non-centric, uh, sort of spread out uh, pirate organization throughout the galaxy. Um, if you have forgotten from two seasons ago, which to be fair, I did too and had to go read my own notes. Uh, they basically, uh, their thing is that uh, technology should be free and open to everyone. The weird part is like it largely is in the galaxy, but there are specific things uh, that they have sort of taken on and want to um, get their hands on for 
who knows what reasons. Uh, perhaps we'll find out at some point. Uh, but that is where we left it. You all identified those three ships uh, and began deciding what you were gonna do about it. Did we miss anything? Did I miss anything or should we hop back in? All right, Again. let's hop in. So you all are on uh, on the sh your ship, uh, the sphere is how I have it in my notes until y'all name it. Uh, you're all sort of in CIC, you're in the command center uh, and, and are all aware at the moment of the ships and the asteroids and the comms relay. The ships don't, well, you don't know if the ships haven't spotted you yet or if they are just not doing anything with the information that you are there. Uh, but that is that is where things are at the moment. Uh, Koza is uh, just to pick up from what we discussed briefly at the end of the last episode. Mm -hmm. I believe Invicta asked Koza to move a droid in the ship's direction. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I think it was. Uh, I think it was something along the lines yeah. of "We go blow them up." Uh, yeah, and I was like, with uh, what on my little Wally that I'm shooting through space right now? Oh, actually, Invicta, remind me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but actually, I think you asked for the probe before you realized they were the pirates because you wanted to bring right. them to the I ship, wanted, right? Yes. Yeah, so once we realized that there was something that they were sh little probes, mm -hmm. I I asked Koza to tractor beam them in, and that's when I was right. like, oh, there's a whole other ship. Yeah. They don't have a tractor beam on this ship. And I, and I, and you sorry, want to go I make, clarify, one. <laughs> make one. I, uh, I should clarify one thing. The smaller ships are much smaller than the big ship, but they're probably big enough to have uh, two to four, like, uh, Musalian sized passengers on board. Um, but the big ship is, mm. is like a, looks like probably some sort of cargo ship, maybe. Like, it's, it's got a big, bulky hull to it. But we want one of the, of the small ships, not both of them. Uh, why? Can I ask why? Why do um, we want one? So don't you want to like take it apart? Oh, you don't have to like infantilize me. Uh, I'm, I'm trying not... to figure out, you seem to have like a, like a very specific thing that you want or recognize or need here. Uh, you just want to take, are we just stealing? Are we just stealing the ships? Oh no, I want to see who's in there and kill them. Oh. Whoa, why are we jumping to murder right see. away? Because pirates and they attacked right. us. Right. Yes. Uh, and Koza just gets really thoughtful and is just scanning her memory base <laughs> for a pirate attack. She doesn't remember, but she doesn't pay attention a lot. Yeah, uh, when the pirates attack. And Invicta's like, and for the record, I wasn't infantilizing you. I was appreciating your talents. Ooh. Thank you. I appreciate I your thought, talents too. Because I the, thought you oh. could build us something to bring them in. But now that I know they're pirates, I just want to murder them. The the rest of you, as this conversation is going on, you watch as Koza like scans her memory banks. And you all understand that she was not with you the last time you saw these pirates. Uh, but in the moment, it seems that she has convinced herself that she was. <laughs> that, that pirate fight, we all remember. Yes, murder them because of the last time that we all remember. Weapons! Is this the vent situation? Yeah, what? Was the vent. Oh, the Where vent we situation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you like rip the floor up to protect the people. Yeah. And then like folded yeah, and I somebody their in half. heads together with yeah. my hair. Like I like oh, right. their heads together from up in the vents. I lowered it down and was like burr, burr, burr. that's what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was fun. <laughs> um, cool. So that's where we are. Is anyone going to fill Porcosa in? <laughs> I nominate okay. Silas. I for sure got <laughs> this. <laughs> I remember the whole thing. I'm busy driving the ship. <laughs> What's incredible to me is like, I fully believe that Koza has now constructed a she complete has. memory of this event. Yeah, um, pirates came and I was in the tubes. Um, and then See? I think the captain died. But something <laughs> Wait, happened. Who's captain? I don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> a captain died. Um, maybe ours, maybe both. 
Who could say? It was a crazy day. This is too real for ADHD me. (laughs) (laughs) And also ADHD me. (sighs) Um, Okay, so uh, Akamba? Yes. Do you want to do um, engineering or weapons since we're going to murder the pirates (laughs) because of last time? Um, I was under the impression that you might not have been on the crew when the pirates were here last time, but I definitely remember it though. I could be Why do I remember a uh, a Jared? I remember Jared. You remember Jared? You remember Jared? I do not remember Jared. I recall Jared. You do? The cat Invicta. knows. Invicta from the sensor station. You do? <laughs> Invicta's right. like Jared. <laughs> I love this conversation, uh, but also I would not be a B. Dave protege if I didn't also make bad things happen during it. So, mm-hmm. um, Invicta, who's wait, who's on? You're on sensors, right, Invicta? Yeah, yeah. That's Great. how I knew. That's how we knew there was an actual for really right, real right, big right. ship. Oh, it was you that rolled the bananas dice pool. Okay, great. Well, let's hope you can do it again. Uh, Cause I, those ships are going to initiate a contest with you. And I'm excited about it. Let's go through that wormhole and roll some dice, shall we? <laughs> You're excited. Don't giggle like that. That's so rude. Oop, we're back. Um, all right. So Invicta, um, yes. what you, I'm trying to think what you would immediately recognize and know about why you're rolling dice in in universe um i think rec- i think the first thing you want to do is when you're putting together your pool you basically just want to put whatever you would whatever kind of pool you would use to like watch the sensors to to detect hidden things on your sensor array um but since it is a contest and since those ships are initiating i will roll first uh, and set okay, the first I'm just, difficulty. I'm just putting my pool together. I have no idea what dice to use. Hold on. <laughs> See, that's what you get. I know, it really is. Okay, we're going to use this one. I'm ready when you are, Captain. This one, great. And we're going to use this one. Literal Captain or Story Captain? <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. All right, so it's an 11 to beat, but you do have... Uh, I did roll a 1. Oh. So you do have an opportunity. You don't have any stress at the moment, right? No. I believe we I believe you have cleared all of yours as I recall. Correct. Yeah. Um cool. So if you would like, you can buy my opportunity with a plot point to uh to yeah, to step up uh whatever skill you are using at the sensor array, if you would like, but it'll cost you a plot mm. point. But I will happily take that plot point okay. from you. And I will step up just... Oh, no, you're spending a plot point if you're going to step something up. <laughs> oh, no, I'm taking I'm taking your hitch. Oh, too. taking my hitch. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> uh, I'm taking your hitch and bumping uh, my not my no skill. Okay. Since I should know this. So now it is a uh, D12. Okay, great. Uh, um, and that'll just be for this uh, this roll. Yes. All right, roll it up. Ooh, your dice are much bigger than mine were. <laughs> I'm just making sure I didn't do double this. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, that looks good to me. Again, <laughs> oh, with these rolls. All right. Um, so Invicta, as you all are having this conversation, uh, your the sca- your sensor suite there uh, detects a uh, like a a scan of the area coming from the big ship and you are absolutely sure uh, that they know you are there. Uh, And you also, uh, with that amazing heroic success and a D10 effect die, I'll say that you also on the sensors detect the um, like engine signatures of the two smaller ships spooling up. So they uh, they are beginning to move probably in your direction. Oh, so they're gonna try to board us. Uh, that is a, a one possibility tour. <laughs> um, I relay this to everyone on the bridge. Who's on weapons? The Kemba started heading to weapons the minute you said it. Hey, Kemba. Yes. 
Their engines are starting. Those two small ships. Can you get a beat on them? <laughs> in case they start coming toward us. Of course. All and right. don't wait on me. Fire when ready. Hmm. All right. I suspect they're trying to board. Oh, I'm sure they are. They want to replay, repay the favor. Silent I gave them a while ago. And I was there for that. <laughs> I'm not sure about that part, but I do remember. Everyone buckled up, evasive maneuvers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. yes. Like, as people are talking, I'm just like, eh, this is a good time. No, we should do this. Yeah, okay, great. So I do want to real quick, I just want to check where everyone is because now we're going to get into like, not quite bullet time, but like we're going to get into what's going on. So uh, Invicta is at the sensor array. Uh, Eli is at the nav station. Uh, oh my God. Kemba is, go- is at weapons. Well, oh, you got he, there. It's fine. He's there. Yeah, you're absolutely there. So he is prepared. Koza is presumably going back to engineering. Uh, you mentioned that there was an engineering like HUD in the CIC. Uh, yep. If I need to leave to go like deal directly with stuff, she will do that. But for now, I think she can like hang here and try to redirect. Yeah, you can do all that stuff from there. Like if there is significant damage to the engines or something, then you can run around. But for now, that's cool. fine. And then Silent M9, you are uh, in the commander's chair, I would presume, yes. Yes, and I am hearing murder and I am hearing <laughs> weapons and all of these things, but I would like to at some point assume a diplomatic position if possible. Is there any way that we can reach out to them via comms? Yeah, absolutely. You could certainly try it. Um, I would definitely give that order quickly before Kemba blasts them out of the sky. <laughs> oh, and he, so he would gonna... happily attempt it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, you're Hold at your the fire. comms, so. Okay, there it is. Mm. Let's attempt diplomacy first. I'm sure that's um, what Major Rafia would prefer. Oh. Sila. Yes. You do remember these are the same people that were holding folks hostage and would have happily murdered us, right? Yes, I'm aware. I was there. Jared I'm just is- checking. Just like Koza. Yes, you had to save people. So wh- why are we trying diplomacy? What if there's people on the ship? I didn't say Everyone the big ship, the small ship. I would put hostages on the little ship. I don't talk to them. <laughs> I like as that may be. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Accurate as that may be, we need to make sure that they don't have hostages this time. And we can at least hear voices in the background, perhaps a lot easier if we are on a small ship versus a larger vessel. So how about we attempt the call, see what's what, and you can have first strike if I am wrong. Fine. Thank you. All right. So you are opening a comms channel to the the big ship, the little one of the little ships, all three ships at once. Yes, I like. Uh, before the comms get sent, I'm just gonna. Uh, yeah. Kosa, just be prepared to give me a lot of power really quickly, <laughs> should things turn awry. Yeah. Okay. Without breaking the ship, that is. You don't have to tell me not to break my ship. I mean, we did it with the last one to go faster. I was just saying, not this one. <sighs> that ship wasn't broken. That ship just was better. <laughs> I, I it. will be as I were then. <laughs> and I'm just gonna give I'll get you some juice. <laughs> and I started I typing. <laughs> yeah, you are ready with the juice. Um, so, Sila, uh, 919. Uh, which ship or which ships uh, are you opening channels to? Um, I would like to reach out to all three. Okay. And I will send a homing beacon from myself to make sure it is strengthened. And she oh, okay. tilts her head back, opens her <laughs> mouth, and lets out her <laughs> calling symbol. No. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try your call again. <laughs> Didn't connect, wrong number.
This is Captain Tyler 919. Making contact. We could kill you or you could answer the phone. I'm giving you the option. Uh, there is a pause. Um, and Eli and uh, Invicta, uh, you, you see that those two little ships are coming towards you. Uh, but in that pause, uh, both of you uh, either see or, or sense uh, that their engines sort of pull back. Um, and they have like little reverse thrusters. So they're slowing down for the moment. And after a few seconds, uh, a voice comes back over the comms. Hoo wee, well that's quite a greeting. Nice to talk to you, Captain Silo 919. Uh, we're gonna need you to go ahead and surrender your vessel to us post haste right away, please. Are you Jared? Uh, no, uh, I can't say as I am. Um, I would tell you my name, but then it feels like we're sort of on a personal relationship kind of thing, and I'm I'm about to hijack your ship, so I don't know if we really want to go there. Oh, man. I don't think it's very polite to hijack the ship without introducing yourself. Yeah. Uh, well, that's... You know, I've never heard that one. Uh, can I just make sure that I understand that once I introduce myself, you all will surrender your ship and we don't have to do no shooting? Yeah. No. I don't want you to Those hurt my all ship. things that you made up, but yes, please introduce yourself so that we may have a pleasant conversation and perhaps save some lives today. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, he says, um, <laughs> okay. Uh, he says, well, uh, I suppose you gave me your name. It's only fair as I give you mine. Uh, my name is, well, you know what? You can call me Jared. It does happen to be my middle name. So if that's who you'd rather I be, that's fine. See, uh, I knew I remembered it. Yeah, maybe you, have we met? But my first name's Mark. Mark. Yeah, it's it's a nickname. I don't, to be honest, I, we don't need to, so, okay, great. You Mark, know who I, I am. I would like you to have to live out your namesake and become ours. Oh yeah, that's great. <laughs> So I'd like to give you the opportunity to perhaps change your course of action. We won't be surrendering this day, so you can either carry on about your way, do one of those idiotic things where you reveal your entire plot through rambling and carrying on, or we can shoot. It's efficient. Um, Koza. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for you to roll some dice. Uh, yes. Because once again, as this conversation is going on, somebody in one of those ships is trying to do a thing <gasps> to the engines. Uh, so again, uh, they are instigating the contest and you are trying to stop them from achieving their goals. So I will roll first uh, and then you can decide from there. Copy and that. what are we rolling? I think it's basically the same true. Yes. See if we do any better this time. Oh, wow. Nope. Significantly worse. Amazing. Uh, it's a five with two opportunities for you. Cool. Uh, so you can spend up to two plot points to step up uh, skills as you desire and put that pool together. Okay. Uh, fixer. I'm mm -hmm. going to, this is going to be a, this is going to be a, just a, a nightmare pool because I want to feel cute. Uh, <laughs> fixer fixing whatever anyone's trying to do to my ship machines because this is my ship uh, you know what uh, knowledge because I am what, what are we doing what is this oh okay yeah knowledge value I love it yeah all right. And then do you want to buy either of those opportunities to oh. step any of that up? Oh, no well, I don't no. I want to keep my pop points <laughs> I think you're good <laughs> I think we're Gucci yeah, you are. I'll 14. keep my 14. Jeez, some beats. Okay, so here's what I think happens because that is a almost a double heroic success. Uh, so that was quite good. So you immediately notice uh, that somebody is trying to like, I guess the best way to describe it would be like hack the engines. Basically, they're not trying to break them. They're just trying to shut them down so that you all can't move. Uh, so you obviously stop them from doing that because they're not gonna, uh, they're not gonna be able to beat that 14. Um, so you stop them from doing that. And not only that, but I'll let you have one additional effect uh, sort of equal but opposite, I guess, on their ships. You could disable their engines if you want, or you could create some other problem uh, in oh, their engines. Let's disable an Short engine. Short of blowing them up, but you know. I would love disable. to disable an engine. Uh, so uh, as 
the moment like Koza like clocks that this is happening, uh, she immediately like kind of like turns excitedly to the head. Everyone sees her ears perk up and they're like flicking back and forth. And after like 12 seconds, she's like, uh, Mark, Mark, sorry. I know you're talking to my cap. Uh, I got to cut in here, buddy. Um, whoever just uh, is trying to touch the inside of my ship, you're going to Mark. Mark, I'm going to turn your ship into scrap. And I want to use that scrap to shut down the engine. Great. You, you never yes. touch my ship again. Uh, you hear you hear Mark go, damn it, Jim. I told you not to let him know you were, what in the shit was that? And you hear, you see just like, it wasn't. Put Jim was on the line. <laughs> Put Jim on the line. Jim, she... She wants to talk to you, Jim. Put Jim on the line now. No, I, I think I'd rather not, thanks. Uh, Jim, I, I'm afraid for myself if you don't come. I'm Jim so can mad hear at you for me, right? me talk to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, I'm going to rip your fucking throat out. Uh, you just hear foot, like, running footsteps. Damn it, Jim, get back here. She's not on board. Yeah. Um, and you all so can't say anything all. else about me ever. <laughs> So the big ship, uh, the engines are currently disabled. Uh, your engines are currently not disabled. Um, and Mark comes back and says, look, 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 look. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. You all forced to be reckoned with. I see that now. I understand that. But look, listen to my perspective. That ship is very, very nice. Uh, yeah. Mark Jared, what's your last name? If you, if you don't mind my asking. Steve, I was cursed with three first names. Sila initiates the software, <laughs> M-O-M. Oh, no. That she has installed. Oh, no. Such no. As. One more time, what was that last name for me? S Steve, Steve, was it? Ma'am. Ma yes, ma Mark, Jared, Steve, I will not tell you again. You will not be boarding this ship. You will tell your little friends to turn back around and leave us alone because they're not going anywhere with this ship today. Do you understand? Well, this feels like a contest. Um, so let's roll some dice, but I'm going to go ahead. And, well, <laughs> let's see. You can, if you would like to spend, you have a plot point. Yeah, because everybody starts with a plot point. If you would like to spend a plot point to make the MOM software uh, an asset for this role and add an additional D6 to your pool, you absolutely can do that. <laughs> Fudge, yes. <laughs> and I do think this is a contest, but I feel like you are the one initiating this one. So you will roll first uh, and that will set the difficulty for poor uh, Mark, Mark, Jared, Stephen. I'm so mad at myself for that name. It's a perfect you did it name. You to yourself. You made <laughs> no choices perfect. and you're going to have to stand by those choices. Did. <laughs> so we are going to use, I feel like once again in culture, it's very direct. It's very upfront. Sure. At least where Sila grew up. I am going to go with influence. Uh, yes, correct. That is the correct skill. Yes, I love that we're using it. So we are going to go influence, power. Oh, sure. Power value. Yeah, absolutely. Assert your dominance. Oh, should I risk it and go with the lie detector monocle for just a little bit? Or no. It's Didn't we say you had to see them for that? Or are you able to do it on audio as well? I can't, I, I genuinely can't remember. I know we've had this conversation. I just don't remember. And I don't want to look through this giant notebook. Well, it can scan out, but I don't think we're going to do it that way. That's not really going to help. Okay. And my hair is okay. not going to help in this situation either. So I'm going to go yeah. with Monsigani Influence, and then I'm going to use the D6 for the MOM software. And the MOM software. I love it. All right, roll it up. Let's see. I'm so excited. <gasps> Contests. We haven't had a contest all season. Oh, okay. A good roll, a great effect die, and a hitch. Um, so this is the first time you've really like made important use of the mom software. Um, and I think it, uh, I think it just, you're not sure if it's gonna work. 
Uh, so I'm gonna buy that hitch from you, take a plot point and take a D6 of insecure stress. Uh, but that 15 is a hell of a 15. All right, let's see. Uh, so we get one of these and we get two of those because I'm gonna use your stress. You said a D6 of insecure? A D6, yes. And, a, and an additional plot point for you. Okay, and then uh, here's my roll. All right, so you say that and... Uh, <laughs> Mark Jared Steven is is hearing it and receiving it. And oh, let's make it interesting. Uh, and I am gonna spend one of my plot points, which I almost never do, but I'm gonna spend my plot point uh, to add another die to my total, making it a 16, which does beat your 15. So now the choice is yours. You can roll again. You can push your luck in this contest and you gotta beat a 16. Or you can give in now. Mark will not go away because of the MOM protocol, but you will also get another plot point. I'm gonna press my luck. Yeah, those dice were pretty wild. I, I would too. <laughs> There's a lot of D10s in that pool. Yeah, and you can, and so, oh, so we should narrate this, right? So Mark uh, Mark sort of says, oh, uh, uh, cause it was just barely a success. Says, um, uh, ma'am, I, I understand um, what you are saying and I, I, I completely get, uh, and to some extent, honestly, sort of sympathize with your position, but um, you have to understand that I, I cannot just not try to hijack your ship. How many plot points do you have, uh, Sila? Now, after that, none. Uh, well, you have the one that I just gave you, right? Because you spent oh, one. You did give me one. I do. Yeah, have I gave one. you one because I bought your. Yeah, so you've got one. Yes. Okay, but you needed two to 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 win. Uh, <laughs> to beat him. An eleven. I love it. And even if you spent that one, the though. most you could, oh, it was totally worth it. So what do you say, what do you say back that uh, after, after Bark says, well, I, you just have to understand my position, uh, ma'am. I have to what? You have to understand my position. I, I am a, I am a pirate and your ship is, um, well, to not put too fine a point on it, very fancy and nice. Congratulations on that, by the way. Yes. And those congratulations will stay with me. And so what you're telling me is you're trying to come into my house and take said house. What bills that, you pay around here? <laughs> uh, well, I suppose I will be paying uh, all of them once the, the ship belongs to me. I lie and, well, actually all of you uh, can see the other two ships have now started their approach again to the sphere while this conversation is going on. Can I jump in the conversation real quick? Yeah. <laughs> Comms are open, I assume, so. <laughs> I've just been yelling. <laughs> Hey, hey, dude with the three names. Mark. Oh, my, there's so many of you that want to talk. Yes, hello? I see your two ships are trying to creep up on our ship. I suggest you stop them if you want to keep them in one piece. Oh, well, um, that is a well, solid bit of advice and I appreciate you for it. Uh, but as I just told um, that Deeply terrifying, uh, but clearly very powerful uh, woman that I was speaking to a moment ago. Um, I kind of, you know, pirates got to do what a pirate's got to do. And the ships are pretty close now. Uh, and it is very um, obvious that one of them is heading uh, toward, well, no, I guess it isn't because your ship's a sphere. So they wouldn't know where to head either. Never mind, they're just coming at you. <laughs> oh, well, in that case, a blade keeper's got to do what a blade keeper's got to do. Oh. Uh, uh-huh. It can be speaks up. Oh boy. Mark, Jared, Steve. Ooh. Oh I God. highly recommend you take the two ships that you have attempting to board shortly and you tell them to go elsewhere. Because if not, I will be forced to use the entirety of this ship's arsenal. Well, maybe not the entirety. You'll never know. I'll use enough to dispatch those ships and ensure that the dust never reaches any planet oh, in any system ever again. So you might want to help tell them to not do what they're attempting to do. That would be my suggestion, but it's up to you whether or not I press this button. 
Kemba, yeah. I'm gonna keep a ship no matter what. <laughs> there's two oh, we can keep quiet. one yeah there you go she definitely uh, stage whispers out loud enough to try to be like extra terrifying in the back for sure for sure uh ikemba do um would you like to make a, a, a con- initiate a contest about this to intimidate this person easily okay let's do it mm. uh so same deal as with christina you are initiating the contest in this case so you will roll first yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh my, my, my standard life is logical because our lives are yeah, logical. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it is logical that we stay alive. Uh, fix. Because I'm going to fix his attitude about everything that they're talking about right now. Like, I don't appreciate uh, the way he's talking sideways. Talking about some, I'm just going to take that shit. That's going to be nice. It's going to be mine. Nah. The hell it is not. Uh, and also knowledge because Kim has been playing around with the weapons on this ship just so that he can understand in situations like this, which button press because reasons absolutely excuse me <clears throat> oh it's best not to hand. just psa <laughs> best not to try and <clears throat> inhale while swallowing doesn't That's go great yes idea. koza um can i spend a plot point to use my engineer ability to throw a d8 uh asset of weapons behind a chemist threat right now oh yeah i like that for sure I just, as he's speaking and like building his case, I want him to see on whatever display he's in front of, like power is beginning to get clocked out of like non-standard things into his array and just like a little thumbs up from across the room. <laughs> oh my up. God. Yeah. And he sees right. that thumb and just. Yeah. Absolutely. Get him. Absolutely. Uh, so D6, if you'd like to add it. I thought D8. It was D8. A D8. Sorry. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yours can be D8. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And the D8 of just funsies. Just funsies. Yep. Oh. The D8 of wreck their bodies and their minds. He's using we want all to of capture their favorite. hearts and minds in whatever explosion this is. We can put them in a botch. jar. I'm just saying, don't botch. Uh, I'm rolling. Whatever the dice do, the dice do. <laughs> okay. Hey, no, what oh. do you know? Y'all, y'all rolling all these hitches, but also these great, legit great rolls. Um, okay, awesome. Mm. I'm gonna buy them. And again, I will ask, I, I will ask you, uh, cause I think I know the answer, but um, in this moment, if there is doubt and unsureness for Akemba about what's about to happen next, would it be in the angry space or the insecure space? Or I guess the afraid angry, space, just out I don't of principle, think that's it. Because they're yeah. trying to board his ship. He won't appreciate that at all. Yeah, uh, so he's, they're trying to board your ship. They just uh, respectfully disrespected your captain. They want to take your brand new ship. Uh, all of these things. So the threat is implicit and effective, uh, but it does sort of that, that lid that you've got on the emotion sort of begins to, to rise. So by both of them, take you two plot points. I'm going to give you a D8 of angry stress. Oh, wait, so I get two plot points? You do get two plot points oh, and okay. a D8 of angry stress. <laughs> I mean, there's uh, worse things to be for a chemist than angry. So, oh, for sure. Mm. For sure. All right, let's see. Well, they got to they beat a 14. Angry. Uh, I'm going to spend another one. Oh, no. Uh, to make it to do the exact same thing as last time. Actually, I'm going to use this one. So, it'll be so I'll bump it to a 17 with a plot point. Uh, and and uh, Mark Jared Steven says, uh, Oh, uh, that was, now I got to tell you, that was genuinely intimidating, uh, but I don't think y'all fully grasp how much uh, I both want to and am literally afraid not to take your ship. Um, there are people much scarier than you all. They're going to be real pissed if I don't come back with a with a good haul. Disagree. Oh, really? Um, oh. That is, that's what he says. We can continue the contest though, Akemba, if you would like to push your luck. You can change up the dice pool, whatever you want to do. But you would have to beat a seventeen this time, mm. or you can, can I... you can. Uh, oh, what? Give me one second. Or you can choose to not and get another plot point. Uh, but again, they will not be intimidated. Go ahead, uh, Invicta. What were you gonna ask? Can I help at all? Um, yeah. If you've got a plot point to spend for an asset, I do because I had two from last week and I got one from earlier. So there I'm you going go. to give. I'm giving. Ikemba, a plot point. Are um, you? Yeah, go ahead. 
Well, I was going to say, I uh, I don't know how good Blade Keeper would do, or I just like, here's the plot point, go forth and use it. Uh, no, so so you will, basically, uh, when you create an asset with a plot point for somebody, you decide that something narratively important happens. So it can be something you uh -huh. said, you can do something that is like kind of intimidating with the ship in some way. Um, oh, I have an to you, idea. Some narrative story point that will give uh, Ikemba now a D8 from Koza and a D6 from Invicta. <laughs> I have an idea. Tyler, Tell me. can you project the record of when we defeated those pirates before to this person? And then also a picture of us standing on the bridge ready to murder him. <laughs> like this is far more terrifying than anyone you're going to ever meet. Okay, so can I get into his system so that on his screen in the ship and on all of oh. the many screens and every possible screen inside of their ships, oh, they are seeing us destroying their counterparts. Mm. So yep. if you want to do it that way, if you want, uh, yeah, go ahead, I lie. I, I also think I no, I also think I remember that image being in infrared because we were looking towards the other ship so we oh, only yeah. saw this happening so it's more oh, creepy because yeah. you don't it's know what's going on even creepier absolutely um okay so if you want to do it this way if you want to like basically hack their systems to get it up on their screens on board then that's going to be another role like another contest that we got hold going on. on yes can i send it as an attached file <laughs> zip it yes zip it and ship it yes Yes, you and can. I would like the file mm -hmm. to go out in two parts. And the first okay. part is just going to be us on the ship walking through. Uh -huh. The second part would be <laughs> us destroying them. So the first file will be fuck around and the bottom file will be <laughs> and find out. <laughs> and so I'd yes. like to send those out, have them open the first one and then come back. Okay, so... Sila, Sila's like, Kemba, give me just a second. Sends these files off. Um, and so this is in the middle of your conversation with them, uh, Ikemba, and you hear him saying, um, I, there's something way more terrifying out there than y'all that's gonna be real pissed off at me if I come back and don't have, a, oh, hold on a second. We've just, what, it, did you just, did you just send us, send us a message with, with file attachments? Was that was that y'all? I, I guess I don't know who else it would be. I now look, you yes. should probably do yourself a favor and open it. Okay, but can we just can we just be real here for a second? Like I know we're at opposite ends of a very tense situation, but like these attachments ain't like viruses, are they? Because that's that's we would not have the ability. No, we would never do viruses. that to you. That's far I mean, too pedestrian. I mean, look, I thought so too. And we do have have scanners, but your ship's fancy and I don't know. And I just, I thought, you know, that that would be a kind of a boring way. Can to, you open to, it oh, so we can, can you shoot come your up with ship? a bug while we're doing this as an aside? Come up with a bug? On a bug to actually hack into their system? That'd be fantastic. I already shut this one's engine down. You want me to just shut well, the other ones down? Of them. I don't want them to be able to have what any am I, action. What am I looking at here? What this is very uh, unsettling. Like what first, is this? Like the first, yeah. Go ahead. That, yeah. That's just. Oh, that was us when we were we met some friends of yours. I think there was another Jared there that day. So yeah, go to that one and then click the second there. file, please. Wait, I have to find. This is going to be great. I love this. I love this so much. What? Well, it's why is it in odd? I mean, it's certainly very creepy sending it in in uh, in infrared. But why is it? Now wait. You want me to open the second? <laughs> the yes. second. Yes, please right. find well, out. All right, this feels like a weird thing to do in the middle of a of a intense, intimidating conversation. But okay, all right, hang on one second. Let me. Why aren't oh, we God, just it's that? taken so long to open up. I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Uh, oh, oh, Lord of Mark. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. What did you all right, find? so Kemba, it uh uh well, it's um, you all are the ones. Um, would you like to find out? Uh, let's find out if you would like to find out. Now it's time for you to for us to continue this log ass contest. I love it. Uh, <laughs> so you have you have a D eight from uh, Koza and a D six from uh, 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 Invicta slash Silent Nine One Nine, and then whatever you want your pool to be for this one, uh, you can change pool, up the pool from last time if you like. Okay, like, great. 
that's not even a question. Um, hmm. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, we still want to fix his attitude because it's still challenging. Sure. Uh, well, and now I have a knowledge that Mark is a little afraid of us. There you go. There you go. And and has my little, obviously I mean a, my little. I mean a lot. Yeah, he was about like you know he was about to say, "Oh my God, you all are the one that did mm-hmm. that thing to that other ship in the fleet." So, all right, and there's your eight. There's your six. Roll it Rolling up, my friend. Okay, you can win this, but you're gonna have to spend a plot point to add another die to your total if you would like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm down. You, you have you have three now because I'm, I'm sitting on them, so like, I'm down for that. Like that's not even a question. Okay, great. Do I just uh, drag one of these down. Just drag one of them down. Done. That's it. All right, now you got a twenty, and I. Don't act. I mean, I guess it's technically possible. Oh, you know what? Let's do it. So, uh, a very B Dave moving. It concerns me a little bit. Well, we'll see. Uh, how to find out. So it's very intimidating, and I can't beat you. And since I chose to roll, I also rolled an opportunity. So if you want to spend another one of your plot points to step down. Uh, that angry stress that you have because you seem to have succeeded in this. Uh, <laughs> um, you are welcome to uh, to spend a plot point and step that down to a d6 if you like. Um, oh, Can I intern and then I do that real quick? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I don't uh, stay oh, yes, thank you for checking. To be on that screen. No, no, no. I appreciate you because it does clear it from mine too. And if I forget to write it down, I'm in trouble, but you're good. Um, so I use two plot points there. So I'm back to the one. Correct, and you just have a D6 and angry now. Done. All right, uh, so there's just this long silence uh, on the end of the comms, and eventually uh, Mark, Jared, Steven uh, sort of comes back on and goes, <clears throat> I, just, I just want you to know that um, you have my utmost respect um, and my apologies. And I know it seems um, a little out of uh, out of character, uh, considering everything that's uh, just happened. But um, if you all happen to run across any more of us, um, and if they, you know, happen to bring up this whole situation uh, when you do, um, if you could just just tell them uh, that, like, you had us dead to rats and on the run uh, or, or or whatever i'd super appreciate that but you know what y'all are right you have proven yourselves um you have as much right <clears throat> excuse me uh to this um jim turn it off i don't want to watch that video no more um we're gonna we're just gonna we're gonna go uh thank you for your time and and our apologies leave the yes. little ship <laughs> go ahead i like so that uh-huh i like engines their engines have been dead because he's yeah, been they talking a big game they don't second, know that. <laughs> second, uh, I'm pretty sure I would advocate for some search and rescue thing as like to help another ship or tow another ship. So what I would like to do is literally <laughs> drag them. Incredible. Where? Just We're in an asteroid field. I mean, take your pick. We're just going to, they're going to oh, go on a bumpy ride, you know? Oh my God. Hilarious. Incredible. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, so Koza, you, <laughs> you say that, we want one of the little ships, um, and uh, Mark, Jared, Steve starts to be like, well, I mean, I, look, I understand and I respect. That's not negotiable. In did, fact, Mark, we need both of those. Did, um, oh. hmm? did you all do something to our, ours. did you all do something to our engines? Put Jim Maybe. on the line. <clears throat> J- Put Jim, Jim on the line. Jim, this is a direct order. You will come to this comm center and you will talk to this lady. Um, hi, hi, this is Jim. How can hey. I uh, help you? Hey, hey Jim. Hi, that, oh, oh, hi. That's Here's how you reasonable. shut down a ship? Oh, no, 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 no. No. I'm not at all. Oh. Your ship is dead in the water, the air, uh, until I decide you get to go again. Or if... So what are you going to give us so we don't kill you? You hear Mark, Jared, Steven in the background, just like yelling orders, like demanding status updates, like doing the captain thing. Uh, Jared goes, uh, 
well, I, um, um, well, um, well, well, ma'am, I don't, I don't know. Is it's really my place to decide? Koza, Koza oh. isn't listening to him at all. Koza. She's just, yeah. She, I'm signing to Eli, like, get the thing, get the full, drone, full, connect. Full yeah. ahead flank, please. And yes. like, I want, I want my my tethers to attach to that ship and get the full ahead flank from from engineering to just just going just accelerating yes. towards more asteroid field yes 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 okay i love that um put together a pool for it ally and you can have a d8 asset that nobody needs to spend a plot point for and that is just the effect of Sila and Akemba and, and Invicta and Koza just scaring the ever living daylights out of this man. Uh, this is a community thing. It's communal, this threat. So Isla is gonna sure, yeah. come on in with the community. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, this is definitely fly because I we're, we are flying. Yes, um, you are. Yep, absolutely. And, and you're uh, at nav, right? So you can you can step up your fly skill just like at will when you're at the nav station. How do I, I, how do I step you step? I would just take oh, out there the goes. fly and oh you did it? Yeah. I, I know I there is a way to do it. I, I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, you did. Great. Uh I don't I have a different layout from y'all, so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh and then knowledge, because uh this sure. is what I know. And then uh you said to put a D8 in here. You well, it's up to you, but you can add a D8 if you would like. Sure, yeah, I'll give not? you that additional asset from your crewmates being absolutely terrifying. <laughs> Perfect. I will roll. Roll it up. That's pretty good. Oh, I mean, I'm gonna roll for him, but like y'all's on fire tonight. All right, let's see. Um these and and you're doing this to the big one or the little one? The one that Mark Jared one. Steve. Okay. The big one. <laughs> Gotta oh, let boy. him know. Uh, yeah you do okay so that gets one of these and another one of these and one of oh you know what we'll do that and i will spend another plot point to make it a little better okay there can i even technically i can but i'm gonna have to have three dice down there no not even close all right uh so so you well you tell me what i mean you beat me real bad uh so you tell me how what happens uh it's like instead of tokyo drift like cos cosmic drift and we're we are just basically drifting this what looks like drifting how does a sphere yes. drift we are doing it and <laughs> they're in tow because their engines are dead and they're basically very close to being clunked around some some like just sitting there you know comet or not comets, but asteroids and stuff mm -hmm. uh yeah and uh, I like just having a blast flying. That's what's that's what's going yep. on. And since uh, I don't really know if this is a thing in contests, but your role was so much better than mine that I'll give you one other thing, uh, which is that uh, for better or worse, uh, you you drift this big old ship into one of the smaller ships, uh, effectively disabling it as well. Uh, and the third ship, the second small, the other smaller ship, uh, like pieces out. You don't imagine it's gonna get super far because it's <laughs> it's like obviously a like you know hijack hull breaching whatever uh but it like pieces out um so you have this you have this big pirate ship swinging around the asteroid belt you have a sort of spinning top of a smaller boarding vessel that is disabled but you got one boarding vessel gtf owing uh and not a shot was fired i applaud you all well done uh we will wrap up uh, the end of this and the horrified response of uh, of Mark, Jared, Stephen after our break, but it's after eight, so we should take a little break. Uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Uh, hope you have enjoyed this wild pirate encounter. Um, it's true what they say. N no plan or even idea survives contact with your players, and I love it. Uh, we'll be back in about five to ten-ish minutes. Uh, go take care of yourselves. Uh, grab bio, grab water, whatever you need. We will do the same. Uh, but don't go too far, because we'll see you back shortly to finish out episode five of Into the Motherlands. See you soon.
Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. Hope you had a lovely break. We have returned for the second half of episode five, season three of Into the Motherlands. Uh, the crew has just literally scared off uh, a, a small fleet of three pirate, well, of three pirate ships. Maybe that's not the best way to describe it. You scared them off, but before they could run, you had disabled their engines and now are just sort of playing, like, I don't know, galactic yo-yo with them in this asteroid belt, which is really just a great visual and I love everything about it. Um, so that's where we find ourselves. Uh, you all are, uh, Eli is piloting uh, the sphere sort of very deliberately through in and out of this asteroid belt. Uh, and that ship is, you know, I don't, I don't think unless, I guess unless you wanted to, because uh, you rolled pretty dang well, uh, but I don't think that the asteroids are going to like breach the hull and like destroy the ship. Uh, but it, you know, it's not a fun ride for anybody inside. Um, there's also one of the small boarding vessels is just sort of spinning in place in space uh, after it got knocked by, uh, by the careening ship. And the third, uh, the second boarding vessel, the third small ship, uh, just, uh, just GTFO'd. Um, I like, how, <laughs> how long do you just, like, joyride through the belt before, uh, before heading for wherever you all are going to head next? <laughs> I thought we were going to haul this ship in. I don't know if people wanted to still do that, um, so. Oh, yeah, well, you, you certainly can. You're very far from Vatoa, um, so you're welcome to continue hauling it. That is absolutely fine. Uh, uh, did we want to, uh, several of you were saying you want to bring this ship aboard our ship. Uh, is that still the plan? Isn't that your plan? You can just own your plan. That's what you wanted to do. And we can do it, but that's your idea. Uh, well, I thought Invicto said that she <laughs> wanted to bring them aboard. And... Is that before or after? Before after what? Before after we have them dead to rights, essentially. We got them. Well, we, like, we have them. What we could do is leave them here to think about what they've done for a little bit. And then when we get far enough away, we have COSA reactivate their systems. No. Captain, I like you a lot. Um, that's a terror. No, it's I wouldn't. Not a good intro. I don't no. think letting pirates think about their choices uh, is the right way to go about it because it kind of oversimplifies like the systemic things that make you become a pirate. Like you don't just kind of think your way out of a situation you probably didn't reason your way into, you know? Why deny them that potential growth? Because they're pirates. Yeah, but they could be astronauts. Someday. I think you need they to disable are. this mom software. <laughs> not gonna take orders from you young lady oh, i'm sorry <laughs> it is no <still> on. <laughs> no absolutely not I and ready. i'm no i was not ready i was not ready well, i think there's a crew that hasn't had a nap today and a lot of i will not go down for a from nap a very very angry place i'm not angry at you i'm angry at the pirates I don't care what you do. Quick interjection I'm... question. Did anybody close the comm channel? I don't know, I don't... did we? It can be, do you think you would have? Right, okay, after, right Just... after everything was claimed and like these are ours and Mark, Jared, Steve knew it was good. Uh -huh. I let them stew in it for a little bit and let you okay, know, great. hear anything it's from all... us. Just curious. Thank you. Could hear carry on. He's still angry, so petty. Yeah. Sometimes you got to be a little petty when you met. I love it. Just checking. Sorry to interrupt. Carry on. Like, it'll be boring to have to be responsible for their life and well-being by towing them all the way back. <laughs> Why don't we just, like, leave them disabled and push them that way? <laughs> and they'll figure it out eventually. And that'll give them all the time they need to make better choices. Or get better at running their own raggedy ass ships and staying away from ours. <laughs> it would have been a good idea to stay away from us. Right? They didn't know, but now they know. <laughs> For the second time, because we all remember them from the last time. I'm very confused about whatever you sent over. Did we 
Are we currently recording this one so that there's multiple recordings? I didn't sign a release. Oh, I, I assume you meant the external view of the ship just careening through the asteroids. Correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, you certainly can. I mean, that's an easy button push for any of you. So yeah, you've got that video file. Uh, and then I want the muted version uh, of what inside this ship looks like, because I imagine it's just body fluids everywhere. Because they're throwing <laughs> yeah, up. there's a lot um, of. Oh, we don't have to. We don't have to get too it's specific. Muted. But it's muted. yeah, there's yeah, it's muted. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> video feed, but muted. video feed only. <laughs> Even that is. I mean, there's a lot of you know going into the corner and sort of doubling over and um, you know a few a few change of change of over of coveralls uh, from, from Perfect. and then I slingshot stylings. them out into open space. <laughs> yes. I love it. Somebody will find them. <laughs> um, do you do you want to like slingshot them in a way that like the ship also catches the little boarding vessel so it sort of goes with it? Or do you want to just leave the bed, the boarding vessel? Because right, no friction, so it is still spinning. Nope. We <laughs> just got leave two, it. I love it. They can come for back one, for it. Two for one, bad rides for them. Yeah, so great. absolutely, absolutely. I am loving this. Um, yeah. All right. So I mean, you've got them, so you can slingshot them whenever you desire. <laughs> just, just let them know. Important place. They're second afterthought. <laughs> They're gone now. Sure. Presumably, though, like like not in the direction of like the system's sun. Yep, and then we send them the uh, unwritable uh, version file of themselves looking silly so they know <laughs> that we got them and they tell all their buddies. And I lie, all right. They, they are in the it. Same. Oh, you know, is... I mean, I'm with you. <laughs> I love wow. it. If, if they had like something that like, you know, they had a, what do you call this? Um, Get the word for it, but like you specialize in a thing, Eli's thing would be shame. There you go. I mean, that's true. That's true. Uh, I love it. So off they go, careening. Uh, you imagine if the comms channel were open, you know, there'd be a very comical sort of cartoonish. Please don't show anyone that file. Uh, as they shoot off into the void of space, to hopefully maybe be picked up at some point by someone who's to say. Um, mm -hmm. All right. What's the plan next? Uh, you all are, it seems that there is no one else in the vicinity now. Uh, so you are free to return to your investigations of the asteroids, the shiny asteroids, if you desire, or something else. Uh, you all tell me. I mean, do I have one of the shiny asteroids? Like, did I bring one in successfully last episode? Oh, uh, if you didn't, you certainly could. Those are not going to try and fight you uh, in terms of bringing them aboard, so we don't need to roll for that. You can bring one up, yeah, definitely. Okay. I spend my time just grabbing stuff outside with my little drone. Yeah. Um, when you, a cursory glance at uh, the first little, like, chunk of asteroid that you bring in. Oh, I think you did grab a piece, actually. Now I'm kind of remembering. Um, a quick, like, once-over of it when you get it somewhere that you can really look at it. Uh, it looks like it's, it's like, metal plating on this asteroid, and it looks like it was basically done um, to, to prevent, like, to, to protect the asteroid and its shape or the whatever. Um, yeah. You can see, like, it's, it is, it is plating. And it's not welded on. It looks like it was like molten and poured on maybe or something. But whatever it does was done to like very clearly to like protect the core of these things in some way. But why is anyone's guess? Uh, I think the only thing Koza would really care about, even though I know I should be thinking more about this because that's an interesting <laughs> detail. Uh, does this at all replicate like anything that she's seen from our mystery machines? Oh, interesting. Um, it's not the same metal uh, as you've seen on all the other ships, but is there a similarity? What a good question. Um, I don't. I don't think it does. At least not, you know, without further study. Uh, at glance, it's not the same metal. It's definitely not. I mean, the the smaller mystery ships were well constructed, but like they had seams. They were obviously yeah. put together in pieces. So, so no, at the moment that it doesn't necessarily make you think of them. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'll just do a cursory scan and then yeah. let the group know like what okay. 
what you just told me. Like, I don't know. They're like dipped rocks. Yeah, basically. <sighs> I'm bored. <laughs> uh, what are the rest of you up to? I guess I should ask uh, the commander and uh, Eli on navs where you all want to take the ship next. Do you want to go towards where um, the signal you were following seems to be headed? It's headed towards one of the larger uh, plated asteroids. Yeah, I think that's where okay. I would navigate. I would try and um, I would believe I have like some sort of UI uh, mm -hmm. map thing right next yeah. to me and i'm just trying to figure out how to plot there safely and that's what i'm doing i'm great coasting coasting that direction love that some fancy flying very good um as you all approach uh, i think we've had sort of the you know vid screens on for exterior views this whole time uh so as you approach you can see uh you know i think i like one of the things that you plot uh as you're piloting in is also to like very quickly you realize you need to put yourself between the asteroids and this system's sun because they are so reflective that if you don't like it's really difficult to see anything um so you sort of leap over put yourself between the sun and the asteroids uh and you very clearly see on like the one side of this big metallic asteroid is is a little antenna array basically um it looks it is it is very small it is unmanned uh and it is it is um yeah it is there it is very it is very obvious because it's the only not shiny metal thing it is a dark metal uh like blot on this asteroid Can you repeat that again? Sorry, ADHD, just like my No, brain. that's okay. Look, I feel you. Also, I am everywhere tonight. Um, yeah, so there's there's a little basically antenna array that you see that sort of stands out on the asteroid because it's not made of the same metal that is okay. I guess we'll, was dipped. We'll match the drifting of uh -huh. that asteroid. And Great. I'll just say to the crew, um, the thing that we found the signal on is that one. And I don't know how we want to approach. Um so we're just in a hover pattern with it. Um, and I also put on my sunglasses, which look like really hot librarian glasses, but with <gasps> tint. Yeah, they um, do. Because it is very bright out there and mm -hmm. Eli wants to preserve their eyes. So they are <laughs> yes. putting it on. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. How do you all want to proceed, approach, deal with it? Um, do we have something that can make like whatever we're looking out of to make that dark so we don't all like suffer from whatever brightness is out there? Yeah, you definitely can. You can like, I think, I can't remember if this was on this ship or not that I made the comment last week about like uh, transition lenses on your view screens. Um, so you can totally do that. I will also say though, as, as Ilay has gotten you closer, um, you will need you will need to do a closer examination if you really want to learn anything about this sensor array, whether that's you all like spacewalking or sending probes and sensors or whatever uh, is up to you all. But yes, you can tint the view screens, but your eye view of this of this antenna array is not really going to tell you much. Oh my God, I just thought about Mass Effect 2 and sending probes to the surface. I'm so sorry. Trying. It's fine because I am trying so hard not to make everything I do be from either Mass Effect or Babylon 5. So it's fine. Uh, <laughs> those are the two things, the two sci fi things in my world right now. And oops. No, specifically, probe away. Probe away. That's Scanning. what I want to do. Uh, yeah, certainly yeah. an option. Sure. Um, Since I'm on sensors, that's what I'll do. Great. Uh, so, what you immediately can detect uh, on sensors. Excellent point. What you can immediately detect, Sans role, uh, is that this station is uh, capable of receiving, obviously, because it did, but currently it is broadcasting. Oh. Huh. Uh, steady signal, intermittent. Um, regular intermittent. Um, and if you want it, well, actually, no, you couldn't do that. So never mind. Regu uh, steady, regular, intermittent. Sorry, I add. I said just all the words you said. Regular, intermittent is what I mean. Oh, I have to take a nap. 
<laughs> I'm just struggling with ready and intermittent being the same thing. I know. Um, <laughs> like the wheels just every, lurch to a stop. I know. <clears throat> every few seconds, it like sends a data packet is basically. Okay, uh, so it's pinging every small thing. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I glad share that, took that. Two and a half minutes of our show tonight. And two adults. <laughs> One of which was not technically. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I relay that. Okay. And uh, I, can we pull the probe in or follow its signal? The, hmm. Well, you. I guess you could take it off the asteroid if you wanted to, although it looks like, just with a glance, it looks like it's anchored into the oh. asteroid in some way. Uh, so it would, it would take a bit of work, but it's y'all, so nothing is impossible. Um, you could track the signal, or at least the direction that the signal's headed in, if you wanted to give that a try. But I will need a roll for that one. Oh, fine. Okay. Well, I don't. Roll. I think. Uh, I think at this moment we can stay here in the lobby. I hope okay. you all don't mind that are watching, but it's just the one rolls for right now. If we get into a okay. series of them, we can switch over. But um, right. go ahead and put you um, put you something together, and I will. This is just a test, not a contest. So okay. I will roll first for difficulty. All right. You have no stress because you are cleared. Um, I'm going to go with exploration. Great. No. And uh, high and old because Invictus is a smart little cat on occasion. What even number is that? Okay, are 13 is the us? number to beat. <laughs> yes, we are. I'm like, yes. on occasion. I'm so, sorry, what's the number to beat? 13 is the number to beat. Dang, nab it. Um, <laughs> you can do it. I love the, oh, mm, I hate it. I hate it okay. so much. Um, Someone help me. Mm -hmm. Meat is not beat, that hurts so much. Okay, um, mm. here's what we'll do. I will buy the hitch from you. Okay. Um, oh, I know what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. I will give you uh, I will give you the information that you want, but it's gonna hurt because um, you were so close. So uh, you're gonna, you, you are, your sensors are trying to follow it and, and they just, mm, they're missing it somehow. Uh, you can, you can sort of get that it's heading towards the, this system's sun. So like in system, but beyond that, you're just not getting a good lock. So, uh, I don't know if if uh, Invicta like I don't know if you go into the panel to try and like juice it up or I don't know if maybe you what 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 moderately reckless thing might Invicta do to try and get this information not obviously not you know uh, large scale <laughs> irresponsibility but just a, you know you're you're you know you're so close and you just want to give it that little goose. Um, I can totally see her like getting on her back and going into the panel and pulling out a tool belt that none of you realize she has. <laughs> it's just hidden in her fur. <laughs> it's just like in a pouch somewhere. She's got like that one travel screwdriver she never talks about. <laughs> just that's the tool belt. It's the one little travel screw. It's amazing what you can do with that thing though. Yep, and it's reversible. Um, <laughs> it's really tonight. I'm sorry, y'all. That's okay. Um, and she tries to basically hot wire it to get more juice. Yeah, and it like kind of works, but it's like very home alone. Like you come out and like your fur is standing on end and like there's a little like, you know, a little like smoke Oof. trailing from oh, one God. ear and a little, yeah. Um, but like it works. Uh, so I'm gonna give you a D6 of injured stress because I think that's no. funny. Um, but you will know that this signal is heading towards uh, one of the inner planets of this system. There must be some sort of receiver uh, on the, uh, let's see, I guess it would be the fourth planet out uh, from the system's sun. And yeah, something there is receiving these little data packets. Okay, I, uh, I, I brush the singed fur down and relay this information. <laughs> yeah. Still. So where to next? What do we do? I guess we follow the signal. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah. All right. Sure. Uh, so Isla, you want to take us in? 
there anything yep. else we want to do here at the asteroids before we head in? I shudder to ask. Uh, great. All right. <laughs> All right. So you can pilot in. It's it's a uh, it's a six planet system. Uh, I lie four of them inside the belt and two of them outside. So you're actually pretty uh, oh well on a galactic scale, fairly close <laughs> to this to this planet that you're heading for, and it looks pretty barren, just sort of gray. Uh, clearly no atmosphere. Clearly not a life sustaining planet of any sort. Um, and uh, so. Invicta, you're able to give Eli sort of a general idea about where this signal was headed on this planet, sort of what maybe what hemisphere it was in, um, mm -hmm. but not much more specific than that. So how do you all want to, how do you all want to do this? How do you all want to do this, uh, I don't know, whatever you're doing, search, or you want to land and walk it, or I don't know, you tell me. Ooh, landing. Just hoof it. It'd be good to get out. We don't have to leave the ship. We could just be on the ship forever. I like the ship. Roll the ship on the surface. <laughs> That's a very good idea. <laughs> oh my goodness. Can we have like a circular band? Like we're a worry ring that just like that's the oh. navigation. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would have to be, honestly. The way that I've described the ship is wild. So I think that has to be how it works. <laughs> just a tread around. <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. Uh, no, it's good. The ship. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Invicta, you can also, uh, uh, you know, there are little portable whatevers that you can sort of program in this signal so that you can try and trace it from the surface as well and take that with you if you like. Sure. All right. I'll do the thing. Now we're live. No, we're now we're live. Hey. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being patient. Uh, you will you will note uh, that we look a little different at the moment. Uh, and that is uh, unfortunately because there were some unavoidable internet issues uh, on our producer's end. Uh, but we wanted to come back and finish up uh, properly for you all this evening. Um, so you all have just come down uh, to the planet. And what I was going to ask you, but what I will hold off on finding out until next week, uh, is what y'all spacesuits look like. Because as I said, no oxygen down here. Uh, so think about that for next week. Um, but as you all are walking around uh, and following the signal bits uh, that, um, that the sensors that Invicta brought with you all are sort of indicating, you definitely all notice, and again, no role required because it's fairly obvious, you definitely notice that this is not a planet good for life. But you see, as you're walking, you see evidence that sentient beings have definitely been here. Maybe it's a footprint, a boot, or I should say a boot print. Uh, you know, I mean, roughly, the size and shape of a uh, Musalian Misajai uh, Monsagene. Um, or you see little bits of, for example, uh, like scrap metal, just tiny little bits of scrap metal, uh, just sort of randomly scattered every every now and again, you come across one. There's obviously evidence of, of people having been here. Um, and never was that more clear than when you get to this enormous canyon um, has to be at least, um, oh, at least a couple of kilometers across and at least the same deep. And about two thirds of the way down in this canyon, you it's difficult from where you are here to make out details, but there is a blemish on the gray stone of this canyon. And it stands out almost like the thing on the asteroid did, because it is this dark metallic building with an enormous uh, antenna dish coming out of the top of it and pointing directly up and out of the canyon. And all of you can check your portable sensor array thingies. And there is no doubt that that signal from the asteroid uh, is being beamed, just realized that was on, is being beamed down to this, uh, to this dish in some way. And right as you 
are about to turn to each other and figure out what's next, you're pretty sure that you see movement down there. And that's where we'll leave it for this week. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out, y'all. Thank you for sticking around uh, through our little tech snafus. We were so close to the end, and I, I just wanted to give you that moment and then give us a chance to do proper outros, because uh, we are really very appreciative that you've been here with us this week. Um, so so thanks for hanging out. Uh, let's do go around uh, chaos style, do outros, let folks know who you are, where they can find you on the internet, and what awesome stuff they can watch you doing between now and next Wednesday, uh, the 8th of September, when we will be back for episode six. Same time, same place, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, for Pacific Midnight VST here on twitch.tv slash Cypher of Tear for episode six. Uh, but in the meantime, Chaos Style, let's go around and let people know where they can find you and what you're doing. Oh, hi, it me. I'm DJ Knight, but I'm not here to talk about myself. I'm here to pass you back to Eugenio so that he can tell you about himself. Oh, God. I started Yeah! This? Oh, I like Sounds it. King you know what? I like it. I called for chaos and here it is. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Hi, everybody. I'm Okenio. Uh, you might know me as DM Jazzy Hands. I've been your storyteller. You can find me on the internet at DM Jazzy Hands. Uh, let's see. What do I have going on this week? Uh, we did our we did our fun little Mass Effect 2 Codex roundtable yesterday. Uh, we do this after we finish every one of the games. We just like read through Codex entries and get nerdy about Mass Effect lore. Uh, so you can catch the VOD of that. Tanya was a guest. Uh, it was super fun. Tomorrow I'll be playing more Mass Effect 3 on my channel. You can follow me here on Twitch, uh, DM Jazzy Hands. And we just dropped episode 200. I know I've been talking about this for weeks, but like it's very exciting to me. We dropped episode 200 of my podcast today. It's wild. It's fun. I had a blast editing it. I'm so proud of the crew for sticking this out for 200 episodes. Uh, so that's called The Last Refuge. You can find us wherever podcasts are uh, found. Um, and then on Saturday, I am playing uh, in a charity D&D game. Uh, DM'd by the incredible, I don't know if she's still here, but the incredible uh, Obelarin, who was in chat earlier. Um, we are raising money for Duquesne's muscular dystrophy research. Uh, it's going to be great. It's on this Saturday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Um, and you should check out Fortner.com's Twitter for more information, because actually it's the first uh, in a series of charity D&D games. Uh, so check out Fortner.com on Twitter. It's spelled out Fortner.com. Um, and you can get information about all of the games, uh, including mine, this Saturday. That's me. Are we calling folks out? I think that Abria should be next. Thanks, Eugenio. Hi, I'm Abria Iyengar. Uh, follow me on social media at Quiddy, Q U I D D I E. Uh, I stream all over the place. Uh, check me out over on Critical Role, where I ran Xandria Unlimited. Uh, you can also catch me as a player on the Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, it's we call it a one shot there's more than two parts there's two parts uh second part just dropped uh so go check that out catch the vod um there's some cool exu goodies can i say that maybe i just spoiled the thing there's kind of cool stuff coming down the pipeline so keep an eye out for that um and i am the gm of misfits and magic over on dimension 20 but right now you can watch me as a player i play Ty b jones on the seven ep new episodes drop wednesdays at the now o'clock so go watch that like i'm going to the moment this shuts down uh and uh i've got one more trick up my sleeve uh for my summer so I'm gonna need everyone to get hyped one more time. And I've got a big announcement for you all very, very soon. So hold tight. That's all. We're calling okay. Bria Jobs, because- Tell me what it is. One more thing, that was smooth. Just whisper it into the microphone to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want everyone to know who you are and what you're doing. So yes. go. Hi. My name is Christina Ariel. You can find me on the internet at Christina Ariel. It's K-R-Y-S-T-I-N-A-A-R-I-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. How do I know? Because it's on my birth certificate. <laughs> um, you can check all of that information. Follow me on the Twitter and find out what I am doing. Um, exciting stuff coming up. Some I can talk about it. Some I just can't. Oh, something very exciting. If you know me, you'll know that I am 1000% a Bravo tragic. And so I am going to be on the Know That podcast talking all things Real Housewives. Yes. With Donnie. Yes. And Quentin. And I'm really, yes. really excited. I'm super hyped about yes. it. Yes. Shout out to the A Who All Gonna Be Over There podcast because they are keeping it real, covering Big Brother for me. And I love them and I appreciate all of those people. And one more, Kendrick over at Reality and Comics too. I love my nonsense. And I get to talk about the nonsense because you'll see it later. Mark my words. Anyway, 
fun stuff. Oh, September 11th, six o'clock during the Lightbox Expo. Be sure to watch. You can finally watch the Concept Art Awards with me and Aldous Hodge. It's going to be yes. super exciting. Yes. Catch him before Fandom when yes. he blows up even more than he already did. And I'll be over here chilling, being like, hey. And then I'll be like, yo, Tanya, I like your shirt. Why don't you tell us where we can support you and make it work? She's going to go last because she's having some audio issues. Oh, hey, Michael Kritz. Tell us about your day and that all of great. your fits. We want to see you talk about yourself real fast. So go ahead, get to the front of the class. All right, this this really is good. time for me to show my ass. Anyway, ah! here we go. Uh, my name is Michael Sinclair II. I go by Michael Kritz everywhere. Uh, I am in Let's Get Wild Mount Saturdays with Critical Bard, um, which is a good time on his channel. So check that out uh i am on second star to the right which we have a show on friday but not this one the following one because we have to move some stuff around this week um and then i'm in faith Forge academy a lovely podcast of uh being in school in the Feywild wild uh at a school so that's pretty cool um i have been busy with uh you know entertaining folks because some people came from out of town so it should hopefully be streaming more off well actually I'll be streaming at some point. Just pay attention. There's things going on, obviously, but I'm looking forward to streaming some magic at some point whenever that happens. Uh, anyway, that's me, uh, and I will ship it over to DJ Knight. Hi, I'm DJ Knight. You can find me on such streams as the Cypher of Tear channel when we play Into the Motherlands as Kemba, a Mosalian Bio Priest. You can also catch me on Thursdays over on the official D&D channel as Desmond Drew. Uh, he is do the a, rest of it in the voice. I'm sorry. That's a please. Okay, since it was requested, he is a human ranger werewolf, and it's lovely. Believe me, you'll have a good time if you come watch it. Also, sign for tears on that as well, so you can come and see both of us over there doing the cool things, and me being a werewolf because you know, badass werewolf shit. Y'all are awesome. Thanks for tuning in, and I'm going to shut my face up so I can hand it over to Cypher Tear so she can tell you about all the goodness that you can find elsewhere. Desmond Down, it can be out as well. <laughs> Is it my turn? Because I can't hear anything. I had to take yeah. my headphones yep, off. Yeah, your turn. <laughs> um, I'm Tanya, Cypher Tear. I forgot what I'm doing, so I've had to listen to a horrible audio frequency <sighs> tweak out for the last 10 minutes. Um, tomorrow I will be on Black Guy Society with DJ. I am um, Fen, your draw down here, Blood Hunter, and I will also be in Seattle at PAX West. I'll be on one panel, one. It is not being streamed. So Please don't ask me on Twitter. I will cuss you out because I'm sick of being asked that question. <laughs> uh, but find me everywhere, Cipher of Tear. I'm going to go finish packing for Seattle because I'm not done that yet, and I have no idea what anyone's saying in the chat because I can't hear anything. Uh, that's all right. I'm uh, saying that's all right. Like she can hear me. That's us, <laughs> y'all. We will see you next week. Same time, same place. We appreciate you very much. Um, and I do. I I would love to ask Tanya if we're gonna raid somebody, but like stick around. And if we do, we do, and give them love. Uh, but if we don't, it's probably because they're not streaming because of the day off of Twitch, and that's cool too. Uh, thank you all so much. We will see you next week, same time, same place for episode six. There we go. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, and happy gaming, y'all. We'll see you soon. Bye. I'm waving real big so Tanya knows to cut the stream. Stay awesome. <laughs> okay.